understanding flow freely in our minds and give us knowledge and discernment. May your blessings be upon us today as we submit to your will. All these we ask in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. With the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Kong An. This meeting is now called to order. May I hear a motion? Madam Chair. Kong Ging. I move that we dispense Madam the Chair. public role. So move, Mr. Chair. Ma Madam Chair. There's a motion to uh, dispense the calling of the role. Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. I uh, would like to recognize first the presence of the following members. Um, we have uh, Representative Lorna Bautista, Representative Ditas Ramos, Representative JJ Suarez, Representative uh, Al Alfonso Omali, Representative Ann Hofer, Representative Ging Swan Singh, our Vice Chair, Representative uh, Maria Lourdes Arroyo, Representative June Gato. I think that's all for now. Uh, com uh, we also have our Vice Chair, uh, Representative uh, Sean um, Ako. Okay. Ma'am Sylvia, can you recognize our uh, resource Hello, person? Yes, ma'am. Good morning to everyone. For this morning's uh, meeting, we have from the Department of Health for our local bills, Mr. Roderick. Napulan together with Mr. Erickson Feliciano, Development Management Officer. We have Dr. Philip Patrick Co, Development Manager, CHDNCR. We have ARD Marwin Bello, uh, Dr. Evelyn David, Dr. Roberto Martin Marcene, RD Emilia Monisimpo, um, RD Annabel Yumang, DOH Mimaropa Pauline Tanyayap. Ms. Uh, Patricia Magliari. And for our Medical Reserve Corps bills, we have Dr. Arnel Rivera of the HEMD. From the Philippine Medical Association, we have Dr. Benito Atienza, the President. From uh, the Philippine Nurse Association, we have Dr. Rosy De Leon and Ms. Maria Linda Buhat. From the ANSAP or the Association of Nursing Service Administrators of the Philippines, we have Dr. Maria Linda Buhat. From the DND, we have Ms. Nata Natalie Labang. From the OCD, we have Sherin Hombre Bueno. And from the DOLE, we have Mark Valeros. That's all your honors. Thank you, Ma'am Sylvia. Good morning again. Um, at the onset, I would like to thank you all, my distinguished colleagues and uh, other guests, and resource persons from various health professions and organizations, as well as government agencies, especially the De Department of Health, who despite your hectic schedules are giving so much time and effort in our quest for meaningful legislations that would promote our people's health as fundamental human uh, right. We cannot thank you enough. The committee has been conducting a series of meetings, yet palagi ninyo kami pinauunlakan. Kahapon lamang ay uh, nag, magkakasama tayo, uh, nagkaroon ng uh, technical working group meeting on uh, CDC bills. But please know that in behalf of my colleagues in the Committee on Health, we sincerely appreciate your dedication and passion for public good, especially in these trying times. Thank you most sincerely from uh, being with us again. Today, the committee shall deliberate on another important piece of legislation, establishing a medical re re reserve corps. This was also mentioned by the president in his SONA very recently, and the committee deems it urgent to pass it into law at the soonest possible time. Conceptually, the idea of organizing a medical reserve corps is not entirely new. For one, we do have a medical reserve corps under the AFP, albeit 
uh, the orientation is different from this from what this committee seeks to establish. Complementary Complementarily, what this committee is contemplating on to establish, as may be gleaned from various house bills before us today, is a medical reserve corps that is well trained and equipped, which can be systematically or in a very in a very organized manner mobilized swiftly in times of public health emergencies. One that can even automatically convene and assume their duties with haste at any given time beyond the call of duty. To achieve this objective, it is essential to harness all the health human resource that we have, doctors, nurses, medical technologists, medical and health specialists, and even paramedics, among others, and organize them programmatically for public health emergency response. This re representation is hopeful that we can build a strong and top-notch medical reserve corps um, I say this for at least two simple reasons. First, the Philippines has very abundant health human resource who are world-class professionals or health workers. We are the number one exporter of nurses and we are top 10 exporter of doctors. This is not to mention other health professionals who are very much preferred by employers in other countries. Yet, we have thousands of unemployed graduates from various health professions, especially nurses and even doctors who have knowledge and training already. It is sad that you can find a great number of them doing jobs other than what they were supposedly trained to do. Second, I am confident that we can build a strong medical reserve corps because I firmly believe in the Filipino spirit of volunteerism or bayanihan, our deep sense of affection and care for humanity. We have seen this by any hand spirit for the longest time. We are seeing this again now in our fight against COVID-19 pandemic when our medical and health workers assumed their post courageously to save lives at the risk of their very own lives. Truly heroic indeed, and we shall be forever grateful to our health frontliners for all their sacrifices. However, I would like to emphasize that in the face of globalization, in the face of inevitable greater challenges that we have to hurdle in ensuring public health and economic progress, our Bayanihan spirit may not be enough if it is not coupled with a scientific and well-organized approach wherein the establishment of Medical Reserve Corps is one of the key elements. I hope our discussion today will be fruitful towards this end. The chair would like to rec recognize the authors of House Bill st uh, establishing a medical reserve corps. Uh, we have representatives Joy Myra Tambunting, representative Aleta Suarez, representative El Rey Villapuerte, our uh, deputy speaker, representative Alfred Vargas, representative Rufus Rodriguez, representative Paul Daza, and yours truly, um, the chair wish to recognize also the following authors who have just filed their bills and which were just referred to the committee yesterday. We have Representative uh, Divine Grace Yu, Representative Ging Swansing and uh, Toto Swansing, Representative uh, Jun Chipeko, and Representative Angelica Ko. For the information of the body, the establishment of Medical Reserve Corps is also incorporated in some bills uh, on establishing a Center for Disease Prevention and Control and the National Health Security Act bill. I'm just bringing this up as one of our concerns later, which we have to decide on, whether we shall report it out separately or just a part of a CDC bill or the National Health Security Act bill. Nevertheless, whatever would be the sense of the committee, the more important thing here is that we would be able to harmonize the two, uh, the two pieces of legislations. The committee will first consider the local bills in our agenda, then we will proceed with the di discussion of uh, the Medical Research Corps. Comsec, Ma'am Sylvia. Yes, Ma'am. Do we have other members present? Uh, yes, ma'am, we have. 
we have um, our representative, okay. Uh, okay. yes ma'am, recognize yep. ma representative David Suarez, author of House Bill 6821. Uh, we have uh, representative Alexi Christine Chutor and representative Cyril Abweg Saldivarna. Okay, thank you, uh, Ma'am Silvia. Would like to recognize um, the author of House Bill number 7146 entitled An Act Establishing a Tertiary Hospital Under the Control, Supervision, and Management of the Department of Health in the City of Candon, Province of Ilocos Sur, to be known as Ilocos Sur Medical Center, appropriating funds therefore, and for other purposes. Do we have uh, Representative Christine Singson Mihan? If none, we can proceed to uh, the next bill. House Bill uh, number 2880, authored by Representative Ann Hofer, entitled An Act Establishing a General Hospital in Sambuanga, Sibugay, under the full administrative and technical supervision of the Department of Health, which shall be known as the Sambuanga, Sibugay Medical Center and appropriating funds, therefore. You have the floor, uh, Kong Ann Hofer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, colleagues and guests. The Philippine Constitution provides that the state shall protect and promote the right to health of the people and instill health consciousness among them. Towards this end, the state shall adopt an integrated and comprehensive approach to health development, which will endeavor to make essential goods and other health services available to all people at affordable costs. House Bill 2880, which seeks to establish a general hospital in the province of Sambuanga, Sibugay, to be known as the Sambuanga, Sibugay Medical Center, or ZSMC, is geared towards helping the state fulfill its crucial mandate. The ZSMC will be the first level two hospital in the province and will finally allow Sibugainons access to affordable and quality medical care without the need for timely and time-consuming travel to the hospitals outside the province. As of the moment, Sibugainons needing focused medical care are forced to undertake a three-hour travel either to Sambuanga City Medical Center in Sambuanga City or the Sambuanga del Sur Medical Center in Pagadian City. This is because they are often turned down by local hospitals due to lack of facilities, equipment, and or expertise. Eliminating the need for this three hour travel translates to reduced out of pocket expenses for our patients. And more importantly, it means better chances of survival for patients requiring immediate medical care. The urgency of this bill has never been felt more than now as we grapple with the devastation of the COVID-19 pandemic. By establishing ZSMC, Sibugainans, especially those who do not have the financial means to seek medical care in private hospitals will be assured of their right to health and health services. Um, South African hero Nelson Mandela once said, health cannot be a question of income. It is a fundamental human right. The fulfillment of this human right in the lives of Sibugainun is what House Bill 2880 will bring. Thus, this earnest request um, for this measure's immediate approval. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you, Kong An. May we hear from Sir, uh, Sir Rod Napulan from DOH? Good, good morning, Madam Chair, and good morning uh, to all the members of the Committee on Health and for all the guests and our colleagues in the government and uh, private sector. Madam Chair, we, we will submit the official uh, position paper of the DOH, but uh, for, for this day, we will uh, read the position paper of the Bureau relative to the House Bill number 2880 as filed and introduced by Representative Ann Hofer. So the, the DOH uh, lauds the introduction of the House Bill number 2880 
as authored by Honorable Representative Anne Hofer of the 2nd District of Zamboanga, Sibugay. The province of Zamboanga, Sibugay comprises of 16 municipalities with Ipil serving as its capital. It has an estimated bed to population ratio of 1 is to 4,878 based on its 2022 projected population of 765,970. This is far from the country's current bed to population ratio of 1 is to 1,000 bed. Based on the DOH online health facility statistical report system, there are seven licensed hospitals in the province, six are privately owned, and one is run by the local government unit, the Zabuanga Sibugay Provincial Hospital, which is classified as level one. The province also has 10 infirmaries, five are local government unit managed, while five are privately owned. The HFDB acknowledges the need to improve the bed to population ratio in the province and supports the measures to improve the delivery of health services among its population. Being the lone government hospital in the province, Zamboanga Sibugay Provincial Hospital has an average bed occupancy rate of 659% from 2018 to 2019 with an authorized bed capacity of 25 beds. Utilizing a VOR of 80 to 85 percent as a standard indicator for an efficient utilization of hospital resources vis-a-vis -vis the occupancy rate for the past two years, the appropriate bed capacity is 200 beds. Thus, instead of establishing a new hospital in the same location, upgrading the currently existing Zambonga Cebu by Provincial Hospital is hereby recommended. This is for more rational allocation of health resources and in consideration of the cost for establishing a new 100 bed capacity level two general hospital, which will require a funding of 594 million for capital outlay for both infrastructure and equipment, 62 million for operating expenses and personnel services of 179 million. Section two of the bill proposes that the hospital to be established under the direct supervision of the DOH. Should the aforementioned recommendation to upgrade the Zamboanga Sibugay Provincial Hospital in lieu of establishing a new hospital be considered, the HFDB also interposes no objection to renationalize the hospital and to rename it from Provincial Hospital to a medical center, provided that the criteria of the DOH are met, and to include a provision that the Department of Budget Management in consultation with the DOH and Provincial Government of Zamboanga Sibugay shall determine the cost of renationalized functions relative to the operations of the hospital from its current internal revenue allotment and thereafter, and cost the allocation of the same to the DOH chargeable against the era of the province. The, for the foregoing recommendations shall complement the implementation of the Universal Health Care Act that aligned with the Philippine Health Facility Development. Respectfully submitted, Madam Chair. We will submit, Madam Chair, the signed position paper by Secretary uh, once uh, available, Madam Chair. Kong Anne, do you have a comment? You're on mute, Kong Anne. Yes, um... Go ahead. Yeah, Dr. Um, Roderick, I was maybe you, you're not aware that we already have spent DOH has already spent 280 million to build a new hospital in the in Tenan. And um, this hospital actually is already almost done. We just need the facilities in the hospital and maybe run by um, specialists and better doctors. I really think you should um, visit the hospital and see that um, I don't know if the province can run it, but because I am not um, an LGU, but I think it is about time because we are the only province without a nationally run hospital and we are in the middle of the peninsula. Some provinces have 200 beds, 300 beds. We have only a 25 bed hospital, which is run by the province. I think it is about time that we have at least more beds because the uh, private hospitals cannot give the same service as um, what we need the 
medical center, the, the one run by DOH. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kung, kung an, yes, you mentioned Chair. you uh, have a new building. Uh, Already done, Madam Chair. The DOH. Yes, it was funded by the DOH for so many years, Madam Chair. And who's running the hospital? It's not yet open, Madam Chair. That's the oh, reason okay. for this bill. Because okay, okay. we have to look for somebody to run it. And yes. why not the uh, national government since it was their funding that put up this hospital, Madam Chair? Thank you, Kong An. Uh, Thank Sir you, Rod. Sir Rod, because you mentioned that the bed occupancy rate in the Sambuanga Sibuga is around uh, 659 uh, percent, no? You mentioned that. And um, you, you, they only have uh, like 10 infirmary, uh, 10 hospitals, infirmary hospitals, five of which are run by uh, private and five local. And you, you do have the uh, provincial hospital, no? So I think uh, ako personally, nakita ko yung need in the area um, and since meron ng investment ang DOH on the infrastructure, kung an, who, who uh, donated the lot? Uh, the province. Okay, the province. Mm -mm. And the person doesn't want to uh, operate that uh, facility. Well, it hasn't been operated yet, so um, it will be up to DOH to decide who will operate it. But just for the body, um, my district has only one hospital, which is a provincial hospital with 25 beds. The rest of the hospitals, which are run by the government, are in the other district. So we really have to get so many cars or you know facilities to bring the people who are sick to Zamboanga City or Pagadian because we really cannot um, accommodate them in the 25-bed hospital in our province. So, so we have this ready infrastructure. The DOH just, to, just has to add the beds, the facilities, because it's already done. So that's all we need, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Kong An. Sir Rod, do you want to comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Kong Um, Yeah. We would like also to clarify, Madam Chair, because the proposed um, uh, hospital is uh, which is on is ongoing construction right now it's on the same location of the provincial hospital in, in, in I'm sorry madam chair it's not it's not the the hospital is about 2 kilometers away from the hospital which is done it is not the same sorry my father was a governor 2001 and it's the same hospital that they have it's not the same madam chair okay thank you sir rod so um Sir Rod. Yes, Madam Chair. Probably you can check, but very clear naman based on your position, the need uh, in the area. No? So on experience kasi, mas, mad, mas, mas mabilis kasi because of the requirements and the political issues between the provincial government, kung irere national has to be aligned with what Kong An's proposal. So there might be an issue. So kung establishment and there's a need and there's an existing uh, infrastructure already, um, it's an opportunity, di ba? So uh, I agree kay, kay Kong An na uh, uh, kailangan. But according to the need siguro kung level 3 or a training hospital na kung ang... Level 2 lang uh, siguro, Madam Chair. Uh, Anong level ng provincial hospital? Level 1, Madam Chair. Oh, level 1. Okay. So, we'll wait for your official position paper. Pero, uh, pag-aralan nyo din yung, re yung recommendation. But for the meantime, kasi yung effort ni Kong An Hofer and na-acknowledge na mo naman yung need, probably we can uh, consider the bill of Kong An Hofer. And maybe we can set, Madam Chair, a visit uh, permitted uh, with our time, Madam Chair. In Sambuanga, so Cebu, guys. Yes, please. Sama niyo ako, ha? So that... Sama mo. Sama ka. Sa... <laughs> anyway, and can we hear a motion for the approval subject to... Madam uh, Chair. ...amendment and compliance? Madam, Madam Chair. Ong Ging? Yes, uh, because I can feel the need 
um, since uh, the provincial hospital is level one only. And uh, in response to the universal health care, I support the bill of Congresswoman uh, Ann Hofer, the very gorgeous chairman of uh, you, Affairs. Uh, I move to approve uh, House Bill 2880 subject to the um, to the compliance of uh, the criteria and requirements of DOH. Uh, so move, Madam Chair. I second, I second the motion. Second. second the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Gorgeous Gorgeous. Thank you. There's a motion to approve House Bill 2880 subject to uh, file an amendment and compliance set by the Department of Health. Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Congratulations, Kong Thank An. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Kong Ying. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on House Bill number 2883, authored by Representative uh, Dale Malapitan entitled an act renaming the Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital in the city of Caloocan into Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Medical Center and appropriating funds therefore amending for the purpose Batas Pambansa Bilang 94 entitled an act renaming the Central Luzon Sanitarium at Tala City of Caloocan as Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital. Do we have... Uh, Representative Malapitan. Okay, we'll now proceed to House Bill number uh, 3066. Authored by uh, Representative uh, Alfonso O'Malley Jr entitled an act increasing the bed capacity of the Rojas District Hospital in the municipality of Rojas province of Oriental Mindoro from 50 to 100 beds and appropriating funds therefore amending for the purpose RA7857. You have the floor, sir. Representative Omali. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Madam Chair. So I move that uh, the exploratory note be considered, my exploratory note be considered as my sponsorship uh, speech. Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. So we'll now hear uh, from the DOH. Sir Rod. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning for uh, all the rest, especially our uh, author of the bill, uh, Kong uh, Umali. So the DOH uh, recognized uh, the uh, intent of the bill to increase the bed capacity of the hospital, uh, the Oriental Mindoro Southern District Hospital. It is an infirmary with an authorized bed capacity of 25 beds under the uh, administrative control and supervision of the local government unit. It has an average bed occupancy rate of 256, 53% based on its two-year uh, occupancy rate. And with 80 to 85% as indicator for efficiency, uh, the bed capacity needed is 74 beds. So the average number of outpatient visits of the same period is 19,490. Um, we would like to clarify, Madam Chair, as mentioned in the section two of the bill, we're in uh, the, in the appropriation, the amount necessary to carry out the provision of this act shall be included in the JA of the following year, its enactment. May we clarify, Madam Chair, if uh, the intent of the author is to renationalize the um, hospital under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Health? No, no, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, it will still be under the provincial hospital, under the LGU, the local government. With, with this, Madam Chair, we fully support this bill pending for amendment on the Section 2. And what we can provide, Madam Chair, is the capital outlay uh, subsidies through the Health Enhancement uh, Program or Health Facilities Enhancement Program of the Department of Health as aligned with its uh, hospital development plan and in the universal health care uh, provisions of the healthcare provider network 
and Philippine Health Facility Development Plan, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sir Rod. Uh, since the DOH is supportive of this bill, may we hear a motion for the approval of the said bill? I move, uh, Mr. I so move, Mr. Sir? Sir? Yes, go ahead, Kongging. Since there is no objection on the part of, uh, of the DOH, I move uh, for the approval of uh, House Bill number 3066. So move, Madam Chair. There's a motion to approve House Bill number 3066, subject to style and amendment, sir. Huh? And can I hear a second? I second. Uh, Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Congratulations, uh, Kong uh, Omali. Thank you very we much. We have sir. another one. Please. Uh, Please. We'll now proceed to House Bill number 3067, uh, uh, an act converting Oriental Pandora Central into Pinamalayan Oriental Pandoran Oriental Provincial Hospital to be known as Oriental Mindoro Provincial Hospital and to increase the bed capacity to 150 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. You have the floor, sir. Likewise, uh, Madam Chair, uh, can we, can I use my explanatory note? Uh, be considered also as my sponsorship speech. Thank you, sir. Sir Rod? Uh, DOH position, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. And this is uh, a second bill of the uh, Kong Omali, um, hardworking um, Kong, Kong Omali. So the Health Facility Development Bureau of the Department of Health lauds the introduction of the House Bill number 3067 as authored by Representative Alfonso V. Omali Jr. of the Second District of Oriental Mindoro. Oriental Mindoro Central District Hospital is an infirmary with an authorized bed capacity of 10 beds under the administrative control and supervision of the local government unit. It has an average bed occupancy rate of 406.5% based on its two-year hospital statistical report. Utilizing the BUR as the efficiency measure with 80 to 85%, so the requirement for this hospital should be at least 48 beds. The average number of outpatient visits for the same period is 22,343. Likewise, Madam Chair, in the previous bill, we would like also to clarify if the intent of the bill is still uh, under, the, under the DOH or should be uh, under the local government. Uh, it could be also under the LGU, under the provincial hospital. It, Right now, no? uh, if it's going to be a provincial hospital, because we have a pending bill also for the provincial hospital to become a, a medical a center. Or a tertiary, no, 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 no. Uh, tertiary hospital. Ah, okay. So for, for the, for the, for the, you know, that's in Calapan, which is about an hour away or 60 kilometers away from Pinamalayan. So, we, I move that uh, we pass this bill so that uh, we can we can you know, we can uh, utilize because it's it's centrally located in the center of the province. So if we put the transfer the provincial hospital there, that would be very useful for for, for the whole province. Thank you, sir. Sir Rod. With this, Madam Chair, the DOH is fully support for the upgrading of the hospitals, provided it is consi consistent with the hospital development plan, as this will complement the implementation of the Universal Health Care Act and of the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sir Rod. Since uh, the DOH interposes no objection, may I hear a motion Madam for Chair. the approval? Kong Jun? Uh, with the concurrence of uh, the DOH, I move that House Bill 3067 by Representative Umali be approved. I so move. There's a motion to approve House Bill 3067. Can I hear a second? I second the motion. Uh, Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Congratulations, uh, Kong Umali. Thank you very much to all of you. 
We'll now proceed. Proceed. Okay, thank you, sir. We'll now proceed to House Bill 3076, uh, authored by Representative uh, Jumel and Anthony Espino, entitled An Act Increasing the Bed Capacity of Mga Tarem District Hospital in the Municipality of Mga Tarem, Pangasinan, from 25 to 50 and appropriating funds, therefore. Do we have Kong Espino? Congressman Espino? If none, we'll now proceed to House Bill uh, number 3880, authored by Representative uh, Lorna Bautista Bandigan, an act establishing a 10 bed capacity community hospital in Barangay Lamidan in the municipality of Don Marcelino, province of Davao Occidental, to be known as Lamidan Community Hospital and appropriating funds, therefore. You have the floor, uh, Tita Lorna, Kong Lorna. Kong Lorna. She's with us earlier. Kong Lorna. Anyway, uh, we'll just uh, call her later yes, siguro, no? We'll now proceed to uh, item number nine, House Bill 4477, authored by Representative uh, Shirney Tan Tambut and Samir Tan. Entitled an act converting the Sulu Provincial Hospital in the municipality of Hulo, province of Sulu, into tertiary hospital, control, supervision, and management of the Department of Health, increasing its bed capacity to 200 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. Do we have Representative uh, Sherney or Samir? Okay, last but not the least, we'll now uh, hear House Bill 6859, authored by our uh, speaker, Representative Alan Peter uh, Cayetano, entitled An Act Establishing a Level 2 Hospital in the Municipality of Bokawe, Province of Bulacan, to be known as Joaquin Villanueva Hospital and appropriating funds, therefore. Can someone... Um, Sponsor the bill of the speaker. Madam Chair. King. Yes, yes. Please. In behalf of uh, Speaker Alan Cayetano, uh, I would like to manifest that the uh, explanatory note be uh, the sponsorship speech, Madam Chair. Thank you, Kongin. Um, Sir Rod, your position, please. Uh, the Department of Health through the Health Facility Development Bureau lodged the introduction of the House Bill Number 6859 as authored by uh, Honorable Representative, our uh, Speaker Alan Peter S. Caetano of the 1st District, Taguig Pateros. So the province of Bulacan comprises of 21 municipalities and three component cities. It has an estimated bed to population ratio of 1, 000, 1 is to 1,272. Based on its 2022 projected population of 765,915. Based on the online health facility statistical report system, there are 62 licensed hospitals in Bulacan. 52 are privately owned, while 10 are run by the local government units. Bulacan Medical Center is the only level three government owned hospital in In consideration of the foregoing, the HFPD interposes no objection to the proposed establishment of a 100-bed capacity hospital in Bukawi, Bolacan, provided that the criteria are met. First, there is an unmet need for all hospitals in the area. 
the DOH recommends a ratio of at least one bed hospital uh, for every 1,000 bed, uh, for every 1,000 population. A certificate of need is obtained from the Center for Health Development to ensure compliance in the set criteria, such as bed to population ratio, travel time, accessibility, integration with local hospital development plan, and as well as the track record of the local government. Third, a feasibility study is undertaken, which includes healthcare needs analysis, health resource analysis, benchmarking against the DOH standards, investment planning, stakeholder mobilization, and planning for monitoring and evaluation, and ent integrity and safety of the hospital facilities, even during disasters and emergencies, is ensured. So the Bureau, uh, although we were already clarified about the inconsistencies in the section um, one, wherein it's already uh, clarified that the direction is uh, going level two with a hundred bed capacity. With this, Madam Chair, the, uh, the Bureau supports the initiative. And um, just to consider the uh, funding requirement of 594 million for the capital outlay, 62 million for the operating expense, and 178 million for the uh, PS. The, the measure will uh, complement the implementation of the Universal Health Care Act and align with the, provided it will be aligned in the uh, Philippine Health Facility Development Plan. On the, on the name of the facility, Madam Chair, we would suggest that to include a general for the uh, name so that it would reflect as Joaquin um, Villanueva uh, General Hospital. Uh, I, I believe, Madam Chair, there is already an ongoing construction in, in Bulacan relative to this is to the establishment of this hospital. So we would like also to also to uh, uh, remind the um, uh, proponent to uh, ensure the um, transfer of the lot as well as the current uh, facilities in the area should this bill will be approved, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank Madam. you, Sir Rod. Okay, since the DOH interposes no objection, very supportive on the proposed bill, may uh, I hear, may we hear a motion for the approval of House Bill 6859. Kong Jun? Madam Chair, since there is no objection from the Department of Health, I move that uh, House Bill 6859 by Speaker Cayetano be approved subject to the compliance of the requirements set by the Department of Health and subject to style and amendment. I so move, uh, Madam Chair. There's a, motion, Madam Chair. there's a motion to approve House Bill 6859 subject to style and amendment and compliance set by the Department of Health. Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Is there any objection? Is there any objection? The motion is approved. The motion is approved. Would like to Call again, uh, Representative Lorna Bandigan. Okay, nawala na po sila. Uh, before we discuss the national bill, uh, I'd like to uh, recognize the presence of the following members, Representative Lianda Bolilia, Representative Rufi Biazon, Representative Samantha Vargas Alfonso, Representative Alberto Pacquiao, and uh, Representative Carlos Zarate. We'll now proceed on the discussion of uh, the bills instituting the Medical Reserve Corps. Um, House Bill Number 6809, authored by Representative uh, Tambunting. Representative Tambunting. Okay, if she's not with us, uh, House Bill 6821, authored by uh, Representative uh, JJ Suarez. Kong JJ. I think he's with us earlier. Can you hear me now? Clear? Yes, go ahead. Hi. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for um, uh, recognizing me and the urgency of the said measure. 
Uh, I listened to your introduction early on before the committee started. Um, yes, it is um, important given the situation that we are in now and given that the administra administration um, prioritizes the um, establishment of the same. Madam Chair, to abbreviate the proceedings, considering that there are other equally important measures in the agenda, uh, this representation would like to adopt the explanatory note of House Bill 6821 as my sponsorship speech, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Kong JJ. I would like to call on um, our deputy speaker, if someone can uh, sponsor his bill, House Bill number 7007. Madam JJ, Chair. Yes, go yes. ahead if you can sponsor his bill. Yes, on behalf of um, Deputy Speaker Elrey Villaferte, in so much as uh, his House bill is similar to that that I have filed. I move that uh, his sponsorship speech, um, no, his explanatory notes serve as a sponsorship speech of his said bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Kong JJ. We'll now hear the sponsorship of uh, Kong Alfred Vargas. Is he with us? If done, Kong Rufus Rodriguez on House Bill 7267. Okay, uh, House Bill 7274, authored by Representative Paul Daza. Okay. If none, I would like to call on Representative Ging Swan Singh for her bill. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, thank you so much. Um, Madam Chair, uh, in behalf of uh, my husband, uh, Kong Toto Swan Singh, uh, we have filed um, House Bill number 7365. And thank you very much for including this in today's agenda. Uh, the current COVID-19 pandemic has shown that our made us realize, Madam Chair, that our healthcare system is unable to cope with the surge of patients needing medical care, mostly due to lack of medically trained personnel. The creation of the Medical Reserve Corps, specifically trained to supplement the existing human health resources, will ease the burden on the country's healthcare system as the Medical uh, Reserve Corps can help maintain the surge capacity of, and provide the appropriate assistance needed in times of health crisis. Um, Madam Chair, in our bill, um, in section four, uh, it is stated that VOH shall create the Medical Reserve Corps uh, under its Health Emer Emergency Management Bureau. So I uh, really request this uh, committee to um, approve this bill as uh, this is part of the uh, President Sona, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kongging. Do we have our representative uh, Divine Grace Yu, one of the authors? Um, representative Angelica Ko. Okay. Uh, may I ask uh, Representative June Gato to chair first the proceeding so that I can sponsor my bill? Kong June Gato, if you can chair uh, to give way on uh, my sponsorship, sir, for House Bill 7331. Yes, Madam Chair. May, may we call on uh, Chair uh, Tan for her bill? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning again. The rationale for House Bill 7331 is simple and the pressing need for its immediate enactment is plain and obvious. On August 4, the President decided to revert the NCR Cavite Laguna Bulacan Rizal to modified ECQ, which ran until the 18th of the month after being placed for some time under a less stricter general co community quarantine. This move 
stemmed from the distress call of dozens of doctors uh, groups that wanted the Philippines that warned the Philippines was losing the COVID-19 fight and demanded for a time out to recalibrate the government's COVID-19 strategies and to give our medical, medical frontliners a little time to rest for indeed the COVID-19 war that the country is now waging is big and prolonged and our country workforce is scarce, dying and getting sick. If this is going to persist further as it already did, then we need urgent reinforcement, which is what this bill is all about. The MRC shall consist of the following hierarchy of call, whose primary mission is to support the country's public health system in times of public health emergencies. Number one, license physicians to include those who are retired and those who are no longer practicing in the hospital setting. The Philippine Health Security Council may coordinate and collaborate with the accredited integrated professional organization or accredited professional organization of physicians for the engagement of private practitioners. Medical students who have completed their first four years of medical course, graduates of medicine, and registered nurses who may be issued by the Secretary of Health with a limited and special authorization to render medical services pursuant to RA-2382, otherwise known as the Medical Act. And number three, licensed allied health professionals. Under the bill, the, the medical reservist will be placed under the Health Emergency Management Bureau of the Department of Health and will be given compulsory basic training and continuing training programs on responding to different national and local health emergency scenarios. The MRC may be mobilized to conduct contact tracing and monitor suspected cases during disease outbreaks help ensure quarantine measures and provide logistics and manpower support for large-scale disaster and health emergency operations. House Bill 7331 likewise proposes the establishment of mobil mobilization centers in every province where medical reservists can register for duty. Along with other bills on the same subject, we urgently need this measure during these trying times. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Are there any other bills, uh, Madam Chair? I think that's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have uh, recognized already the authors are related to the creation of MRC, but they are not around. But definitely will include their uh, bills in the discussion. So we can uh, proceed now, Mr. Chair, in the uh, calling of our resource persons uh, for their positions on the proposed uh, bills. So I now turn over the uh, chairmanship to Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, would like to call on first, I think, is the Department of uh, Health. Um, Okay, uh, may I know who's uh, representing Secretary Duque from the Department of Health? Dr. Arnel Rivera, do we have uh, Dr. Arnel Rivera? Yes, Madam Chair, good morning. I am representing the Department of Health and Emergency Management Bureau, as it has been honorably mentioned in one of the proposed bills. Uh, allow me, please. Good morning to everyone, Madam Chair. To all Sir Arnel, yes, 
Uh, medyo pangit po yung audio ninyo. How about this one? Hello? Pangit pa rin, sir. Feedback po. Baka, sir, mas okay na hindi kayo gumamit ng uh, earphones. Uh, you have to, I think, detach yung, nakahook po yata sa computer nyo yung earphone. So, mic test. Okay, please proceed, sir. Okay. We'll call you again, sir. Uh, can you fix your uh, audio, sir? We'll just call you again. I'll, uh, I will call first uh, representative from PMA, uh, Dr. Achenza. Dr. Benny. Good, mo good morning, Madam okay. Chair. Uh, one of the suggestion of the Philippine Medical uh, Association is to uh, the Philippine Medical Association is to encourage the recruitment of doctors uh, especially in the military uh, with lenient requirement kasi nakita po na para napaka strict naman nung mga requirements nila and we said also suggest na we include a uh, certain uh, training of these uh, students during college pa di ba meron po tayong ROTC Siguro uh, ang encourage natin ay training nila for the paramedical uh, uh, what you call this paramedical status po yung studies nila uh, hindi lang po yung ROTC may dalawang track for medical and ROTC para pre in preparation po in their med uh, kung pupunta sa sa medical field nurses ganun po and uh, Madam Chair, can I request then po, since uh, the Philippine Medical Association uh, with uh, our foundation, the Child Bullying Health Workers Foundation, we have trained more than 20,000 students to be health workers. As of now, after 25 years, these students po, uh, mga nurses na sila, doctors, and we can, uh, we can include them kasi 20,000 na po sila all over the country. We can include them as our reserve. And we encourage uh, the government to uh, we encourage our go government to give scholarship to these students. Nasa ano pa po sila? Kasi this project is going for the uh, last 25 years, and we teach school students, high school and grade school students, to be health workers. And as of now, most of them were graduates na. But yung pong iba gusto po nila magtuloy sa me uh, sa medical field, nursing medicine pero wala po silang pera and we can encourage them po for the future reserve po of the medical uh, uh, personnel of the for our health uh, uh, field po. Yan po yung mga suggestions po namin. And regarding sa medical students to be included po, yung pong hindi pa graduate and the interns uh, they should be in the supervision of the licensed physician po. Those four are our recommendations. Thank you, uh, Doc Benny from uh, the Philippine Medical Association. Before I call on the next uh, resource person, Kong Daza is uh, requesting that, uh, that he is... Uh, explanatory note uh, be uh, recorded as uh, his sponsorship uh, speech. Dr. Rivera from uh, the Department of Health, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Can you hear okay. me now? Okay, sir. Okay, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Madam Chair, the honorable sponsors of the different bills of the Medical Reserve Corps. Uh, allow me, please, to read the position paper of the Department of Health regarding the bills. Uh, the Department of Health supports House Bills number 6809, 6821, 7007, 7157, 7267, 7274, 7331, and 7365. 
the, uh, which seeks to establish a medical reserve corps that can be called upon and mobilized to augment the nation's health human resources capacity during a state of public health emergency. In January 2002, President George W. Bush, in his State of the De Union address, asked all Americans to offer meaningful volunteer service in their communities. Many medical and health volunteers offered their skills in response to September 11, 2001 attacks. These attacks underscored the need for a more organized approach to using medical and health volunteers during an emergency. Since the Medical Reserve Corps initiative began in 2002, units have been formed in nearly every state and thousands of individuals have expressed interest in volunteering. As a result, local communities have increased their strength and capabilities in responding to community needs and disasters. In view of this, the DOH respectfully submits the following comments and recommendations for consideration. Number one, on Medical Reserve Corps slash call to the Medical Reserve Corps service, we seek clarification if the scope of the bill is limited only to those who have obtained degrees on medical nursing, medical technology, and other health-related fields, and not health professionals who are duly licensed by the Professional Regulation Commission. Second, include a provision for limitations, example of which are the age limit, exceptions for those with existing medical conditions or risk factors, and other similar concerns. Number two, on Medical Reserve Corps mobilization. With the defined scope of the MRC under Section 3, the Commission on Higher Education may be more appropriate than the Department of Education since it has the mandate for tertiary education. On organization, making the Health Emergency Management Bureau as the lead implementer of MRC will pose some mandate issues logistical and financial challenges due to the limitation of the Executive Order 102 for which it was reclassified or created. Further, HEMBI has been identified to take on major tasks of various proposed legislations, such as the creation of the Philippine Center for Disease Control, the National Health Security Council, and the Department of Disaster Resiliency. Number four. On deployment in case of a declaration of a state of war, state of lawlessness and violence, or a state of calamity nationwide mobilization, MRC deployment shall be limited to team or group mobilization to ensure their safety and to maximize the prospective missions. Number five, on evaluation of the request for deployment, we seek clarification on the rationality of the criteria used in evaluating and approving or disapproving request for deployment of the core. On mobilization centers, we seek specification of the agency that will oversee them and manage these centers as they will be located in the different parts of the country for ease and facilitation for immediate response. On expenses of deployment, given the limited resources of local government units that might be exhausted during the public health emergencies, expenses of deployment shall be charged to the national agency, either central or regional. However, this should not prevent the local government units from extending the necessary support to the deployed MRC, such as but not limited to accommodation, meals, transport services, and other similar offers. On identification, serial numbers, and registry, a prospective recruit must signify intent to join the MRC. The MRC database shall be updated on a semestral basis and must contain the current contact details of each member with a list of training required. On school fees, we see clarification on the intent of including this provision about school fees in Section 3, which provides that the members of the MRC are persons who have already attained the degree or have already finished the course that they are taking and are therefore graduates from the higher education institution. 
on the penal provision, failure to respond, there is a need to define contemplated justifiable reasons for failure to respond to all call to the call of the government. On disciplinary and corrective proceedings, cl please clarify us on the need to involve the PRC. Section 3 of this bill provides that MRC shall be composed of persons who have health-related degrees but are yet to have their respective licenses to practice. On the amount of compensation, this shall depend on the extent of their duty and based on the existing compensation scheme being received by their government hired counterparts. Special allowances and other benefits shall be provided during mobilization, such as mobilization benefit package, combat pay, temporary added duty pay, or other similar forms of benefit for the mobilized MRCs over and above the regular benefits. On legal liability and malpractice insurance, clarify, we need clarification on whom, who shall be accountable should a member of the MRC commit medical negligence. The DOH suggests that they should be at all times under the direct supervision and control of licensed medical or health professionals. Further, in any circumstance, an MRC member dies while on mission or deployment, we hope that you would consider the provision of, of honorable burial rights similar to those of the military and afford them the, the death benefits for the bereaved family that they may leave behind. Respectfully submitted, Madam, uh, for, for the Secretary of Health. Thank you so much. Sir, Dr. Achenz, Dr. Rivera. Yes, ma'am. Official position nyo na po yan, signed by the Secretary po yan. Uh, we will uh, give you a copy, ma'am, of the signed uh, copy, ma'am. But for now, it is the one that was provided to me for reading for your uh, appreciation, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Please stay with us. I will have a discussion. Would like to recognize uh, the president of Philippine Nurse Association, Dr. Rossi De Leon. From PNA, Dr. Rossi. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Paul. Uh, the Philippine Nurses Association actually is encouraging recruitment of nurses. Um, we have uh, communicated to the different officers all over the country because we have 20 regions all over the country and 94 chapters. Um, the Department of Health already have given us communication on the call for mobilization of nurses. And um, with this MRC, we, do, we would like to ask on the qualification of uh, the members to become, um, in, to become a member of this MRC, the compensation and the benefits. And uh, we are also looking actually into the whereabouts of our nurses. As reported by the HRH last week there is really an sur there is a surplus of nurses in spite of the fact that we are experiencing shortage not only here in the philippines but all over the world so tinitingnan po ng hrh together with the department of health and our association the whereabouts of these nurses kasi ang sabi nga po we have so many nurses we have so many in the rooster of prc but we are looking where are the whereabouts. Remember po that the migration of our nurses is more or less 60%. And uh, the remaining number... Um, facilities they have. So may mga BPO po tayo, ang iba po nasa education. So the Department of Health and our... Uh, association is really working into it together with our board. Uh, we will be submitting the official position statement together with other nursing organizations. Here, Dr. Linda Buhat uh, from ANSAP. So we will be coordinating and we will be uh, giving a position statement regarding the MRC in order for us to help in this kind of 
pandemic and in this kind of health crisis. Salamat po. Thank you, ma'am. I uh, would like to call on a representative from DND, Ms. Uh, Natalie Labang. Hi, good morning, Madam Chair and other esteemed representatives. The DND recognizes the importance of instituting a medical reserve corps, which can be mobilized rapidly in terms of emergencies, considering that the proposed MRC will not include those under the AFP reserve force, as the intent is to top other persons who have degrees in medicine, nursing, medical technology, and other health-related fields, we will see comments of the AFP Reserve Command, especially on how the establishment of an MRC will affect them. We will also seek the comments of the Office of Civil Defense, as this involves disaster and emergency response. The department will submit its official written position to the Committee on Health. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, any representative from uh, AFP? If none, from the OCD, we have Shireen Hombrebueno. Ma'am Shireen? Hi, Madam Chair. This is Shireen Lucas Hombrebueno from the Capacity Building and Training Service of the Office of Civil Defense. Um, I, I'm greatly and honored to be the representative of UC Ricardo Harlat for this very important endeavor po. Uh, based on Ma'am Natalie Nabang from the Department of National Defense, um, I will uh, give my uh, report na lang po na, po na Ma'am for UC Halad when it comes to the um, composition of the Medical Reserve Corps in line with the uh, disaster uh, uh, response po, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, would like to call on representative from Dole, Mr. Mark Valeros. Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, we will submit our official uh, position paper once in time. But for the purposes of uh, discussion, allow me to read uh, the draft position that we have referred. The Department of Labor and Employment fully supports any measure that will be for the benefit of the Filipino people. The department loves the authors of these various bills that would create and institutionalize the medical reserve board that would complement the frontliners in the healthcare system during times of national disaster, disasters and health emergencies such as the COVID-19 pandemic. This shall ensure institutional capacity to address the inadequate manpower that the health system may encounter, particularly in dealing with communicable diseases. However, to ensure the sustainability of its implementation, the DOLE humbly recommends for the following inclusion in the proposed measure. The proposed medical reserve corps would better perform their health functions if they are licensed and gather the necessary experience in their medical practice. As present laws requires the license to practice as a prerequisite. This is consistent with the House Bill version of uh, Chair Representative, Representative Angelina Tan. However, uh, kung talaga kulang na lang po, we may uh, also consider yung proposal po ni Dr. Benny Atienza of PMA na under sa direct supervision na lang po ng mga license itong mga uh, under board na mga part po ng medical research board. Uh, number two, detailed procedure for enlisting, training, deployment, remunerations must also be included in the proposed measure, especially for those in the private uh, sector or private practice. Sa amin mga kasi sa government, tulad ko ma'am, as, uh, as a medical doctor ma'am, once na ma-pull out ako dito, okay lang po yun kasi uh, my department would continue giving my salary. However, yung those in the private uh, sector, so papaano po yung magiging sahod po nila. Siguro ma'am, maganda rin consider po dito yung ginawa po ninyong uh, batas ano, sa Congress yung sa mga athletes na uh, so many time na pull out sila pero may, na ano pa rin sila ma'am continue pa rin po yung salary then lastly ma'am uh, most importantly of course yung funding 
should be part of the proposed law, especially in its early stage. This is to help operationalize the law no? para mag, ano na siya, uh, gumalaw na po. Uh, that's all your honor for now. Thank you, uh, sir. Do we have guests from uh, CHED, Commission on Higher Education? Okay, if none, do we have guests from uh, Department of Education? From uh, PRC, Professional Regulatory Commission. From the DBM. Do we have guests from DBM? From uh, Philippine Red Cross. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, from the Department of Budget and okay, Management. Okay, thank you, Ma'am. Ma'am, I'm Chris Darundai from the Department of Budget and Management. Good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, to our honorable representatives and colleagues, both in government and private service, uh, Ma'am, we will submit the official position of the Department of Budget and Management once available. However, we will read the position of our Bureau relative to the funding requirements. Um, recognizing the heroism of our physicians, nurses, medical technologists, healthcare and hospital workers, and other frontliners who risk their lives, uh, limbs, and even the safety of their loved ones to ensure that tens and millions of Filipinos' health remain safe. Uh, physical, emotional, and mental fatigues are being experienced by our health workers in efforts to keep country's health system operation and effective. Long before the COVID-19 pandemic, our government hospitals suffer from shortage of medical and allied medical workers. Most of these workers are overworked due to voluminous patients they encounter on a daily basis. With that in mind, establishing a medical service corps will support the creation of a pool of health workers who will be able to help in times of disaster and health emergencies, such as pandemics and other emerging and re-emerging diseases. Hence, we interpose no objection on the passage of the bills. Uh, moreover, ma'am, relative to the section on the appropriation, we suggest that this uh, will be written as follows. The initial amount necessary to implement the provision of this act shall be charged against the current year's appropriation of the DOH. Thereafter, such sums as may be necessary for the continued implementation of this act shall be included in the Annual General Appropriations Act. That will be all, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ma'am. Uh, do we have a guest from the Department of Education? I think I saw Mr. Vicente Panaon. Okay, from a medical action group. From uh, Presidential uh, Legislative uh, Liaison Office, PLLO. From PAMEP. Okay, is there anyone I fail to recognize? Kindly raise your hand lang po. Okay, we can proceed na to the discussion. Uh, is there any members who wanted to clarify uh, based on the position stated by our guests? Authors? Madam Chair. Kong Juan. Uh, Next. Just, just a clarification on the um, qualification of to be a member of the medical corps on doctors. Um, those with degree, I mean, no, with no license yet, and awaiting or awaiting license or have not taken. 
I was uh, concerned with the medical graduates who have finished clerkship and there are medical graduates who have already taken the internship, postgraduate internship. Some medical schools include internship as part of the curriculum and therefore they are now ready to take the board exam. But some medical schools uh, have the internship after the graduation. So I think uh, there's a big difference between a graduate of a four-year medical, four medical course and a graduate with one-year internship. Are we going to include both? Or are we going to include only those that have finished the internship program, the postgraduate internship program? Sir, actually, yung proposals natin, uh, magkakaiba siya eh. Meron po na graduate lang ng four years medical uh, of medical course, which is hindi pa kasama yung postgraduate internship. No? Meron naman po na uh, after... Uh, ang proposal is after. So, uh, titingnan po natin, but definitely ako, ang take ko po dito is to um, gather all possible uh, health human resource at the time of uh, pandemic or outbreak no or disaster. So, ang importante siguro dito, sir, is uh, makita natin lang, ma-identify ma natin yung limitations of functions no as mentioned kanina ng DOH if it's uh, with direct supervision of uh, doctors baka mahihirapan din tayo sa ganung sitwasyon kung talagang uh, limited no uh, yung ating available licensed uh, physicians the reason why we wanted a medical reserve core yung uh, whether licensed or not licensed is to augment yung uh, existing uh, workforce that we have. But definitely, we have to define siguro yung uh, hanggang saan lang yung functions na pwede nilang gawin. So, uh, siguro po pag nag-technical working group, yung in-depth discussion based on the expert opinions of our uh, resource person uh, so that uh, ma-prevent din natin yung mga legal implications no should we call them on duty kasi alam natin buhay yung hahawakan nila yon so so far sir yon uh, we have to determine but ako ako tanungin niyo with basta na graduate siya ng ng four year course no so uh pwedeng so pwede na yung wala pang internship uh, madam chair yes. kasi sa okay. on the four years naman they have the exposure in one year exposure in the hospital Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. I have a question sa DOH. Uh, our guest from the DOH, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, could you kindly, okay. could you, sorry, sorry for that. Dr. Arnel, kasi we discuss yung, as, as I mentioned, doon sa aking uh, opening remarks. Um, yung medical res MRC or Medis medical reserve corn, uh, sa proposal namin initially sa discussion ng National Health Security Act Bill, we've included it as a component no one may isang provision doon yung uh, creation uh, and then uh, here comes the CDC bill meron din po yan so yan yung kahapon pong naging tema ng aming uh, discussion kasi may overlapping so ang gusto ko lang tanungin ang DOH po ang position nyo, should we take it uh, independent of the the rest of the bills like yung CDC and NHSA or should we include it if we include it which of the two bills dapat natin siya isama 
Ma'am, ma'am sa akin lang po muna kasi offhand ma'am this is a direct question addressed to me lang. Ang ang idea kasi is the reason we have a health emergency management bureau is because we would want to say that there is command control coordination and collaboration in that bureau that will handle emergency and disaster. Now if we will now link together the role of what HEMB is being projected to assume once the National Health Security Council will be formed as well as the CDC, the bottom line will always be the four C's of command control coordination and collaboration. So how, how each of these mandates will work will be up to the Bureau on how it will be orchestrating as one the whole effort because if we are handling the security component which is the health security side where we have the policy making and direction as at the strategic level and we have the cdc that is responding to the possible outbreak of any uh, pandemic definitely if you have a a unit that is more or less uh controlling at least or having a coordination f uh, function then I think everything will come into place, just like a big puzzle that you will put it all together into one big picture. The same will go if you have the MRC, because the main function of the Health Emergency Management Bureau, as far as my response division is concerned, is to mobilize my response teams, mobilize the technical experts, and mobilize the logistics to support the needs of these people who will be mobilized. Now, if you will put MRC, then that will just be another emergency response team that is another tool that we can use to augment the needs for appropriate response. So that, that's my take on the question, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Rivera. Uh, do we have members uh, who wanted to ask questions? Actually, um, there are uh, differing provisions po on the proposals, no? So, medyo marami tayong dapat i-discuss as uh, just like yung uh, position po ng PNA kanina. They were asking on uh, benefits and uh, salaries uh, pagdating doon sa mga nurses natin. So, uh, yun yung mga bagay nating uh, kailangan tingnan and then the qualifications uh, we have to uh, set yung at least minimum uh, requirements no, then on the qualifications. Um, do we have guests who wanted to speak up on the matter? I'd like to recognize pala the presence of uh, Kong Miki Bulago. Uh, who's raising then? Dr. Roda Coco. I'm sorry, ha? nahirapan ako makita po kayo lahat in the screen. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, I agree with you also in the in the inclusion of the limitations of functions of each level of medical uh, fields. No, but uh, what uh, we are also suggesting is that we include levels of competencies on each level in 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 each ano uh, uh, criteria and criteria for. For acceptance, din po, not too stringent uh, like the military, uh, but uh, uh, sana po more lenient naman at least for for the levels of competency. So we will be able to. May I ask everyone to uh, please uh, mute your uh, screen or gadget if you're not uh, speaking? Go ahead, Ma'am Goko, Doctor Goko. Please unmute your uh, um, Dr. Goko. Yes. You're still so on. That, Go ahead. So what, that there will be no problems in leveling clerks or interns or underboards uh, because they do have uh, cl clarif uh, classified competencies in each, including nurses po at saka med techs, di po ba? So para po meron po tayong uh, jo uh, job specifications for each din po. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Goko. Uh, ano organization po ang you Philippine represent? Medical Association po with Dr. Atienza. Okay. He was anyway, not able to He was not thank able you. to mention. Okay. Uh, I'd like to recognize first the presence of the following members. Representative uh, Henry Awaminal. 
Representative uh, Sherlyn Banyas Nograles, Representative John Ray Chanco, Representative uh, D.B. Savellano, our Deputy Speaker, and Representative Franz Castro. Dr. Ben is raising his hand from PMA. Dr. Ben yes. Achenta. Uh, as, as the clerks and, and medical interns, uh, as of now po, di ba ang telemedicine is uh, uh, accepted na natin uh, by the DOH. Siguro, uh, the yung pong walang mga license, can we, use, we can use them in the telemedicine kasi they are not direct, directly uh, concerned with the patient. Pero ang mga outpatient po sila, yung mga calls natin for emergencies na itadirect pa sa mga hospitals. In, uh, this, uh, this process po ginagawa sa UPPGH, they use their interns in medicine. Dr. Benny Achenza, Dr. Achenza, you were mentioning earlier kasi your, the program of PMA where you train uh, school age children. Yes. So uh, you were grade school yes. and teen, teen health workers. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have in Gumaca, Quezon, uh, in your place. Uh, and this, uh, ano po, uh, for the past 25 years, we have 20,000 students na po na nag-graduate. Most of them nag-nursing, nag I, we have doctors na pathologists, meron na po kaming ibang ano. And we can use them in their community. Kasi mm -hmm. natrain po sila for six, uh, three to, two to three months na mga doctors. And they know how to get the, the height, the temperature, uh, even the signs and symptoms of all the diseases. Kasi ang uh, binibigay namin training sa kanila parang sa mga doctor din in the uh, lower level lang. And we can use them po kasi uh, as of now, uh, we have uh, in 12 regions na po we have uh, deep, uh, 12 regions of the Philippine Medical Association all over the country involving 33 compound societies of the uh, out of 119 compound societies of the Philippine Medical Association. Okay. Thank you, uh, Doc Benny. And we, if we could gave uh, ano po, uh, scholarship to them kasi madami po gusto sa kanila pumasok na medicine nursing in the medical field po. Uh, we can ano po, encourage them kasi marami po sila. Okay, thank you so much uh, for sharing your uh, programs, uh, Dr. Benny. I'd like to recognize Representative Hector Sanchez. He's also present. Who else? Kong Helen, uh, Kong Christine Singson. Kong I'm Christine. Here. Yes. Yes, po. Uh, yes, uh, Kong Christine. Uh, we'll discuss your uh, local bill after uh, this uh, MRC. Thank you, Chair. Madam Chair. I'd like to recognize first uh, the presence of uh, Kong Maitet uh, Colliantes. Uh, we also have uh, on our guest, uh, Dr. Troy Hefte. Um, that's all. Yes, uh, Konging. Yeah, since uh, no more no more resource persons wanted to speak, also no uh, members of the committee who would like to ask questions. May I move that we create a technical working group? to consolidate and uh, discuss uh, more on this uh, on these bills, Madam Chair. So move. There's a motion to uh, create a technical uh, working group. Uh, may I hear a second? Second. 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 Julie seconded. Uh, is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. I'd like to recognize the presence of our Vice Chair, uh, Representative Maricel Nagano, uh, Representative uh, Irene uh, Saulog. Okay, that's all for now. Now we'll go back to the local bills, no? Madam uh, Chair, Madam Chair, can can yes, I uh, make a motion? Can can we be uh, co-authors of the bill, which will go through the TWG? The members person okay. can yes. I move yes kong an uh comsec uh, there's a motion uh to uh make the members present is it okay with everyone 
to be co-authors of uh, the Medical uh, Reserve Corps bills. Okay. I second. Okay, duly seconded. The motion is approved. Okay, we'll proceed to the discussion of a uh, local bill. Madam Chair. Konging. Yes, uh, sorry, before we proceed, um, I just received a message from the office of the speaker. Uh, um, I am uh, making a motion to uh, an amendment uh, instead of Joaquin, uh, instead of uh, Joaquin Villanueva Hospital, uh, we would like to amend this to um, Johnny Villanueva Hospital in um, honor of the late Mayor Johnny. Uh, so move, Madam Chair. There's a motion to amend the name of uh, Joaquin, Villanueva. Joaquin Villanueva General Hospital into Johnny Villanueva uh, General Hospital. That's under House Bill 6859, authored by uh, Representative our uh, speaker, Alan uh, Peter Cayetano. May I hear a second? A second. Um, Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. We'll now call on Representative uh, Christine Singson Mihan, to author, the author of House Bill 7146, for her uh, sponsorship speech. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, may I uh, submit explanatory note to be my sponsorship speech? But it's about the first uh, DOH hospital for our province to be called or to be known as Ilocosur Medical Center. That's it, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Kong uh, Christine. May we hear from the DOH, Sir Rod Napulan? Thank, thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning, uh, Kong. Christine Mehan for uh, this House Bill Number 7146, an act establishing a tertiary hospital under the control and supervision and management of the Department of Health in the city of Candon, province of Ilocosur, to be known as the Ilocosur Medical Center, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. The DOH, through the Health Facility Development Bureau, lauds the noble intent of the House Bill 7146, as introduced and authored by Honorable Representative Christine Singson Mehan of the, of the Second District Province of Ilocosur. Ilocosur has 21 hospitals and 11 infirmaries. None of these are level three hospitals. The bed to population ratio stands at one bed for every 736 of the population. The two nearest DOH level three facilities are in Batac City, Ilocos Norte, and in the city of San Fernando, La Union, both of which can be reached by more than two hours of travel from a local source center. The, the DOH interposes no objection in the establishment of a local source medical center, provided that the evaluation of merit and issuance of the certificate of need through the DOH Ilocos Center for Health Development is complied. Together with the key stakeholders, estimation on the potential to attain desired health outcomes must be studied vis-a-vis -vis the resources to be invested in the facilities establishment. Further, we recommend the following. For section one, replaced with that there shall be established a tertiary level care to be known as the Ilocosur Medical Center to be located in the city of Candon, province of Ilocosur, under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Health. On the section two, replaced with the DOH shall develop a hospital development plan to define the initial service capacity and capability, developmental goals and targets of the hospital. On the section three, replaced with DOH shall consult the province of Ilocosur, the city of Candon and other stakeholders for the identification of the land to be acquired and developed as well as the determination of initial infrastructures, equipment, staffing, and operational costs in the development of the hospital. On the section four, replaced with a provision on the development of the IRR as it is already 
on the Section 5 of the proposed bill. And on the Section 5, replaced with the Secretary of Health shall immediately include the implementation of this act in the department's programs and current appropriations. And then thereafter, the amount necessary for the continued development and operations of the Ilocosur Medical Center shall be included in the annual General Appropriations Act. With these recommendations above, Madam Chair, the House Bill Number 7146 shall contribute to the implementation of the UHC to the benefit of the catchment populations and the healthcare provider network therein, as aligned with the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan for the 2020 to 2040. We'll submit the signed position paper, Madam Chair, uh, once uh, signed by our uh, Secretary of Health. Thank you, Sir Rod. Uh, Kong Christine, do you want uh, Madam to Chair, I accept all the recommendations and amendments from the OH. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, may we hear a motion Ma for the approval? Kong Madam, Madam Chair, thank you very much. As uh, due to the need uh, of uh, this bill for to support the universal health care and the full support of the DOH, uh, I move that uh, we approve House Bill Number Seven One Four Six, provided that the bill is compliant to the criteria and requirements set by DOH and subject to style and amendments. So move, Madam Chair. We second the motion. Second. Uh, there's a motion to approve House Bill 7146, subject to style and amendment and uh, compliance uh, to the requirements set uh, forth by the DOH, duly seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Congratulations, Kong Christian. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, and to all the members of the committee. We'll now proceed on House Bill 38. 8-0, authored by Representative uh, Lorna Bandigan. I was informed that the internet connection of Kong Lorna is uh, really bad, so she's requesting that the explanatory note be the sponsorship speech. May we hear a um, uh, the position of the DOH on the said bill? Thank you, Madam Chair. So the Department of Health, um, Lodge the noble intent of the House Bill Number 3880, as authored by Representative Lorna Bautista Bandigan of the Lone District Province of Davao Occidental. The province was created by virtue of Republic Act Number 1030, which was ratified in 2013, and includes the municipalities of Don Marcelino, Jose Abad Santos, Marita, Santa Maria, and Sarangani. The 2015 provincial population is estimated at 316,412. And based on the DOH data of licensed health facilities, there are only 136 licensed beds for inpatient care in the province. One bed is being shared by 2,326 of the population. This is far from the ideal 1 to 1,000 bed population ratio. In consideration of the foregoing, the Health Facility Development Bureau interposes no objection in the establishment of the Lamidan Community Hospital provided that the evaluation of merit and issuance of the Certificate of Need through the DOH Davao Center for Health Development is complied. Together with the stakeholders, estimation on the potential to attain desired health outcomes must be studied vis-a-vis -vis the resources to be invested in the facilities establishment. However, due to its role in the healthcare delivery, it is more appropriate for the proposed hospital to fall under the direct supervision of the local government unit. Rest assured that the DOH shall provide the necessary capital outlay support in the establishment and the development of the hospital as it will be included in the General Appropriations Act. With above recommendations, Madam Chair, the House Bill Number 3880 shall contribute in the implementation of the UHC to the benefit of the catchment populations and the healthcare provider network in as aligned with the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan for the 2020-2040. We'll submit, Madam Chair, the signed position paper once uh, um, uh, approved by our Secretary. Thank you, yes, uh, Sir Rod. Uh, since the DOH interposes no objection, may I hear a motion? Kong Jun? Uh, Madam Chair? Go ahead, Sir. Uh, uh, since there is no uh, objection from the Department of Health, 
Um, I move that House Bill 3880 three, three, um, uh, by Repres Representative uh, Bandigan be approved subject to uh, the compliance set by the Department of Health and subject to style and amendment. I so move, uh, Madam Chair. Second. Thank you, sir. There's a motion to approve House Bill 880 subject to style and amendment and compliance to the require requirements set forth by the DOH. Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Uh, congratulations, uh, Kong Lorna. We'll now hear another bill authored by <laughs> Representative ba Lorna Bandigan. Oh, there, Tita Lorna. A House Thank Bill 879 entitled An Act Establishing yeah. a 10-bed capacity community hospital in Barangay Nuing in the municipality of Jose Abad Santos province of Davao Occidental to be known as Nuing Community Hospital and appropriating funds therefore. Tita Lorna, would you like to sponsor the bill? Yeah. Okay, good morning, Madam Chair. And to my fellow colleagues in Congress, I have filed two bills, actually. Uh, sabay ko na lang, Madam Chair. Uh, both establishing 10-bed capacity community hospitals in two different areas in my district of Davao Occidental. Madam Chair, I would like to move that the committee adopt and consider the explanatory note of its bill as my sponsorship is pleased. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Tita Lorna, uh, Kong Lorna. Uh, can we hear from Sir uh, Rod uh, their position on House Bill 3879? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Kong Lorna. And the DOH, uh, through the Health Facility Development Bureau, lodged the novel intent of the House Bill number 3879 as authored and introduced by Representative Lorna P. Bautista Bandigan of the Lone District of Davao Occidental. As previously mentioned in the uh, House Bill number 3880, there's a need for the hospital in the in the province since it has already a, a bed to population, population ratio of 2,326 uh, population for every one bed. In consideration of this, the Health Facility Development Bureau interposes no objections in the establishment of the new in community hospital provided that the evaluation of merit as well as the issuance of certificate of need through the DOH Center for Health Development is complied. Together with the key stakeholders, estimation of the potential to attain desired health outcomes must be studied vis-a-vis -vis the resources to be invested in the facilities establishment. However, Madam Chair, as uh, previously mentioned in, in the House Bill number 3880, since this is a community hospital, and it has a more mandate for the local government unit, we uh, fully support for its operation under the LGU, and then the DOH uh, will provide necessary capital outlay requirements through the Health Facilities Enhancement Program. With these uh, um, proposed measures, it will contribute in the implementation of the UHC to the benefit of the catchment population and the healthcare provider network. And as aligned also with the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan 2020 to 2040. We will submit the signed position paper, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sir Rod. Uh, since uh, the DOH interposes no objection, uh, may I hear a motion for the approval of House Bill 3879? Kong Jun. Madam Chair. Uh, without, with no objection from the Department of Health, I move that House Bill 3879 by Representative Lorna uh, Bandigan uh, be approved subject to, uh, the comply subject to the compliance with the requirements set by the DOH and subject to style and amendment. I so move, uh, Madam Chair. Second the motion. Second. There's a motion to approve House Bill 3879, subject to style and amendment, and uh, the request set by uh, the Department of Health. Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Congratulations, Kong uh, Lorna. Okay, uh, do we have uh, Representative Dale Malapitan? 
for House Bill 2883. Can uh, any member sponsor the bill of a representative bill, Malapitan? Kongging. Thank you. You're on mute. Yes. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, in behalf of um, Congressman uh, Malapitan, R Dale Malapitan, I would like to manifest that the uh, explanatory note on uh, House Bill number 2883 be recorded as his sponsorship speech. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Kongi. Uh, may we hear from Sir Rod? Thank you, Madam Chair. So the Department of Health through the Health Facility Development Bureau lodged the noble intent of the House Bill Number 2880, an act renaming the Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital in the city of Caloocan into Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Medical Center and appropriating funds, therefore, amending for the purpose Matas Pambansa Building Bill Number 94 entitled an act renaming the Central Luzon Sanitarium Atala, City of Caloocan, as Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital, as introduced by Honorable Representative Dale R. Malapitan of the uh, First District of the City of Caloocan. The Health Facility Development Bureau welcomes this proposed measure to rename the hospital and accordingly improve its hospital development plan. This bill is consistent with the directions provided for DOH facilities under the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan 2020 to 2040, currently being updated to align with the implementation of the UHC. However, it should be emphasized that even as House Bill Number 2883 provides these facilities transition towards a medical center, its service mission in relation to the National Leprosy Control Program should not be affected. Moreover, Mandate to provide sanitary services for patients with leprosy should be maintained and be part of the development plan as indicated in the Section 3 of this bill. Finally, the Bureau also recommends that under Section 5 of the bill, the amendment clause, it should be additionally provided that an act likewise amends Republic Act Number 11286, which has named the facility as Dr. Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital and Sanitarium. Accordingly, the name was specified in the DOH Administrative Order Number 2019-0938, dated September 30, 2019, the implementing rules and regulations of the RA Number 11286. We will submit our signed position paper, Madam Chair, once. Uh, Sir Rod, made. clarify ko lang, this hospital is a DOH hospital, right? Yes, Madam Chair. Currently, it has a uh, licensed bed of 200 and uh, it has a uh, um, um, COVID ward yeah. right now. Yeah. So we're using this uh, now as a COVID referral hospital. Yes, Madam Chair. And we, uh, as um, in the past Congress, Madam Chair, we, in, we already increased the bed capacity and uh, expand the mandate from 200 to 800 beds. Oh, okay. okay. Isa po ito sa mga hospitals po na may low po tayo. Okay. That you also facilitated, Madam Chair. May we hear a motion for the approval of this bill? Uh, Kong Jun Gato. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, with, uh, with no objection from the Department of Health, I move that House Bill 2883 by Representative Dale Malapitan uh, be be approved subject to the subject to compliance with the requirements set by the Department of Health and subject to style and amendment. I so move, uh, Madam Chair. I second the motion, second. Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Kong Jun. Uh, there's a motion to approve House Bill 2883 subject to style and amendment and compliance uh, to the requirements set by the Department of Health. Julie seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you so much, uh, 
Kong Ying. Another one. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Nahinayang lang po ako sa oras at panahon na kinalandar natin itong mga bills na to. Basta ikaw, basta ikaw, yes, Madam Chair. May utang uh, sa mga representative na to. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. We'd like to call on Kong Ging uh, to sponsor again House Bill number 3076 uh, authored by Representative uh, Jumel Anthony Espino. Thank you, Madam Chair. In behalf of uh, Congressman Jumel Anthony Espino, uh, I would like to manifest that the um, explanatory note of House Bill number 3076 be recorded as a uh, uh, his sponsorship speech. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Konging. Uh, Sir Rod. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the DOH through the Health Facility Development Bureau lodged the uh, intent, the noble intent of the House Bill number 3076, an act increasing the bed capacity of the Mangatarem District Hospital in the municipality of Mangatarem, Pangasinan, from 25 to 50 beds and appropriating funds, therefore. As introduced by Honorable Jumel Anthony I. Espina of the Second District Province of Pangasinan. The Health Facility Development Bureau interposes no objections to the proposed increase in the hospital's capacity, provided that the facility remains under the supervision and control of the local government, and that in the expansion of the capacity and necessary staffing, maintenance, and operating costs are provided. With uh, support of the Department of Health for the capital outlay uh, requirements, should it be included in the General Appropriations Act. With the above uh, recommendations, Madam Chair, the House Bill Number 3076 shall contribute to the implementation of the Universal Health Care Act to the benefit of its catchment population and the healthcare provider network therein, as aligned with the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan 2020 to 2040. Respectfully submitted, Madam Chair. And we will submit the signed position paper once again. Thank you. Uh, Rod, Kong Jun, may we hear a motion for the approval of this bill? House Bill uh, 3076. You're on mute, Kong Jun. Kong Jun, you're on mute. Sorry. Madam Chair, with no objection from the Department of Health. Um, I move that House Bill 3076 by Representative Jumel Anthony Espino uh, be approved subject to the compliance set by the Department of Health and subject to style and amendment. I so move, uh, Madam Chair. Second. There's a motion to approve House Bill 3076 uh, subject to style and amendment and uh, Compliance to the requirements set by the Department of Health, duly seconded. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Uh, last bill, Madam Chair. House bill. Yeah. Yes, uh, Kong uh, Waminan. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, uh, before we proceed to the last bill, as you had mentioned, may I uh, uh, ask a clarificatory question to uh, the DOH representative? although not related on the bills because all the bills were already approved. But uh, I think he represents the Health Facilities Equipment Bureau. So probably he is in the position to answer my query. I was informed by my colleague here in Samis Occidental, Congressman Bin Kanama, uh, party list uh, co-op, not co, that DOH is distributing ambulances in the different congressional districts. Fortunately here in the province of Misamis Occidental, uh, the, my district, um, we have, we are uh, three congressmen here. Uh, first district, uh, the Honorable Jigoti, and this representation in the second district, and partly list co-op, not co. Unfortunately, of the three congressmen, this uh, the distribution of the ambulances. Ako lang ata ang hindi nabigyan. My two other colleagues are given. The distribution will be tomorrow. May I know on uh, saan ako nagkukulang or on what situation why this representation um, 
is not afforded the courtesy of ambulances distributed by the DOH. And kung waminal, with due respect po, no, kasi baka may magtanong din ibang congressman, can we just finish the last bill and then we can go back to your query? Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Okay, I submit to the pleasure of the Chair. Okay, thank you, sir. Oh, one last bill, uh, House Bill number 4477, authored by Representative Shirni Tan Tam Tambut and uh, Samir Tan. Uh, again, may I request Kong Ging, the ever supportive friend. Yes, my, your BFF and my BFF. Uh, Madam Chair, I really admire your patience and dedication to your work. And I'm here to support you. Um, Madam Chair, in behalf of Congresswoman Shirni Tan Tambot and Congressman uh, Samir Tan, um, I would like to manifest that uh, the explanatory note of House Bill 4477 be recorded as their sponsorship speech. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Kong Ging. Uh, may we hear uh, Sir Rod? Thank you, Madam Chair. And the uh, DOH uh, lodged the um, intent of the House Bills number 4477 and 4562, and are converting the Sulu Provincial Hospital in the Municipality of Polo, province of Sulu, into a tertiary-level hospital under the direct control, supervision, and management of the Department of Health, increasing its bed capacity to 200 beds and appropriating funds, therefore, by the Honorable Representatives Cherny A. Tan Tambot of Pusog Tausog Party List and Samir A. Tan of the 1st District of Sulu. Sulu Provincial Hospital is a level one hospital with an authorized bed capacity of 100 beds under the administrative control and supervision of the local government unit. It, it has an average bed occupancy rate of 115.82% based on its two year 2017 to 2018 annual hospital statistical report. Utilizing that uh, bed occupancy rate of 80 to 85% as a standard indicator for the efficient utilization resources of the hospitals, vis-a-vis -vis the occupancy rate for the past two years, the appropriate bed capacity is 136 beds. The average number of outpatient visits for the same period is 40,285. In consideration of the foregoing, the the Health Facility Development Bureau interposes no objections to the increase in bed capacity of the Sulu Provincial Hospital to 200 beds and upgrading of its service capability provided that the requirements set by the DOH through the Administrative Order Number 2012-0012 are complied. The HFDB also interposes no objection to the proposed measure aiming to renationalize the hospital provided that the following criteria are met the expressed intent of the LGU to give up its authority over the particular health facility, including its assets like human resources, buildings, grounds, records, and equipment to the national government, and address this to the Secretary of Health, course through the corresponding DOH Center for Health Facility Development Original Office. Sangguniang resolution justifying and explaining details of transfer of authority and with supporting resolutions from the Local Health Board and the Local Development Council. Information on the health facilities condition, situation analysis of the catchment area, financial, and other records showing difficulty in providing resources and records of interventions, strategies, and activities that the LGU had undertaken in the past. And the Bureau also proposes to rename the hospital from provincial hospital to the more appropriate nomenclature like general hospital to reflect its service capacity and coverage. In addition, the Health Facility Development Bureau proposed inclusion of a provision to, uh, to state as the Department of Budget and Management in consultation with the DOH and the Provincial Government of Sulu shall determine the cost of renationalized functions relative to the operations of the Sulu of the hospital from its current internal revenue allot and thereafter, and cost the location of the same to the DUH chargeable against the era <clears throat> allotment of the provincial government of Sulu. With this, Madam Chair, the foregoing recommendations 
shall complement the Universal Health Care Act implementation aligned with the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan. And Madam Chair, would like also to clarify further that uh, this, since the hospital is within the Pangsamoro administrative um, region, I think we need also to consider the position paper of the farm government, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sir Dodd. So, uh, may I hear a motion for the approval? Madam Kong Chair. Kong Joon, go ahead. <clears throat> With no objection from the Department of Health, I move that uh, House Bill 4477 by Representative Sherni Tan Tambot and some, uh, Representative Samir Tan uh, be approved subject to the compliance uh, set uh, compliance with the requirements set by the Department of Health and subject to style and amendment. I so move, uh, Madam Chair. Second the motion, the motion. Thank you. Uh, there's a motion to approve House Bill 4477 subject to style and amendment and compliance uh, to the requirements set by the Department of Health. Julie seconded. Uh, is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Before I call again, Sir Rod, uh, to respond on the query of our representative Owen Owamenal, I just want to announce that on Thursday, we're going to have another hearing. The plan is uh, supposed to be a presentation or briefing of the DOH on the budget under the NEP if it's available already. No, if not, uh, we'll be... Uh, uh, hearing uh, local bills again and few national bills. Um, I'd like to recognize the presence of our deputy speaker, uh, Representative uh, Don Gonzalez. No, okay. Um, Rod, are you in the position to answer the question? Actually, Madam Chair, we are coordinating right now uh, on the issues raised by Representative okay. Wamina. Okay. The ambulance, Madam Chair. Yes. And then we will provide, Madam Chair, the response kung available na po mamaya. Okay. Um, Kong, uh, Kong Henry, uh, the problem is uh, although Rod is in the Health Facilities Development Bureau, he is not the one handling doon po pagdating sa funding and allocation of different uh, HFEP uh, natin. It's Director Gorgolon. If um, you want, I can send you the number of Director Gorgolon uh, so that you can uh, uh, ask her directly or I can ask Director Gorgolon to get in touch with you and explain. Okay, um, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I just wish that the response should be in, yes. a, in the committee so that oh, there okay. might be other similarly situated can be guided accordingly. No, although... With your advice, because I just uh, came to know it um, just uh, last night. So I will manage also to um, ask Director Gorgolon. But I think uh, Dr. Uh, Director Gorgolon is handling the HPIP. This is uh, uh, the equipment. Is, is this, are the funds of these uh, ambulances coming from also, the HPIP? Sir. Yes, uh, it's included the HFF for uh, equipment, uh, buildings, and ambulances po okay. under the HFF po. So Th we'll ask then po uh, Director Gorgolon to call you directly and siguro right uh, to send you in writing po yung explanation to make it formal. Okay. Okay po, sir. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you so much to our, yes, uh, Rod. I think uh, he received the response of... Uh, HFEP uh, department. Madam Chair, um, we, we will communicate, Madam Chair, um, the information related na lang po by the HFEP. As it was mentioned, Madam Chair, the ambulance allocation is being coordinated directly with the legislators, Madam Chair. And we will uh, inform, Madam Chair, the HFEP uh, office to directly uh, communicate na lang po with the uh, Kong Waminal regarding uh, his concern, Madam Chair. Okay. Oh. Please, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, uh, Ma Madam Chair, Madam Chair, we'll finish Kong uh, Maitet, we'll just finish uh, Kong Henry. Go ahead, Kong Henry. 
yeah, I just like to react on the statement of uh, um, Roderick. And he said that the distribution will have to be coordinated with the legislators. I am the legislator. I represent the second district of Misamis Occidental, and no coordination has been made to me with the delivery of ambulances tomorrow. I just like to put that in record. Okay, sir. Yan. Uh, Rod, please. Kong my tet. Hi, Madam Chair. Good morning. I will uh, like to uh, the concern of uh, Congressman Womenal. That's also my concern. So uh, if you can also give my, uh, uh, if uh, Director Gurgulan also can uh, contact me uh, with the same issues as uh, uh, Congressman Womenal. Because uh, there were some uh, uh, ambulances that were given here in my district, but it never passed through uh, this representation. It was, I think, uh, directly given to the LGUs. So uh, okay. that's also one of my concerns. Plus, uh, yun nga, sana naman uh, nai-informan lang tayo na meron darating na ambulansya para sa uh, munisipyo. No? So, okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Kong Maitet, uh, we'll definitely uh, relay your uh, concern to the appropriate uh, individuals from the DOH. I'd like to recognize like also to the presence of Representative Maria Lucille Napa also on today's meeting. Okay, is there any other concern so that we can have a lunch break? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. Yes, uh, Rod. Madam Chair, the, our director and our director Vera as well as Yusek David would like to relay, Madam Chair, if you could be also provided with a slot to present, Madam Chair, the plan, the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan 2020 to 2040 for consideration and for consultation, Madam Chair, of the uh, member of this uh, committee, Madam Chair. Okay. You're re requesting on Thursday on, or next what, week? Next week. Wait, Madam Chair, wait next week, Madam Chair. So, okay, so again. Madam Chair. Comsec, please uh, take note on the request of uh, Sir Rod Napulan. Okay, thank you so much. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng ating uh, members uh, who are present on today's hearing and to the resource persons. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, palagi ang suporta sa amin. As uh, we'll see you on Thursday, um, Rod, another local bills. Uh, sorry. Opo. May we hear the favorite motion? Kong Jun? Madam Chair, if there are no other business uh, matters to discuss, I move that the meeting be adjourned. I so move, uh, Madam Chair. Second. Okay, Second. there's a motion Second. to adjourn the motion. Seconded. Madam Thank you Chair. so much, everyone. The, mo the meeting Thank is now adjourned. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. You, Madam Thank Chair. you, everyone. Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. God bless, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.